What is something your parents said to you that may have not been a big deal, but they will never know how much it affected you? Part 1 When my dad was on his deathbed with pancreatic cancer, he wasn't allowed to talk. He fought and fought with the nurses so that they would let him say one word to my brother and me. He took off his oxygen mask, looked at us both, and said, Hey. It was hilarious. He was the best. He lay there dying and fought with nurses to give my brother and I a laugh on a day when our world was falling apart. Happy Father's Day, Dad. My dad, when in the ICU a couple of years ago, spent about five straight minutes gasping for air just to tell me that he'd had an ultrasound and my mother needed to be informed he wasn't pregnant. I honestly thought he was going to say he wasn't going to make it. I love that Glaswegian. My dad passed away from cancer a few years ago. During his battle, I was his sole caretaker. At 19, I was taking care of him, making sure our bills were paid, getting groceries, cooking, cleaning, setting up appointments, and the million other tasks that come with being someone's caretaker. One day when I returned from running errands, my dad told me he forgot our electric bill was due that day. I casually told him that I had already run a check over while I was out and about. I remember he stopped what he was doing and just turned to look at me and said, You're going to be just fine when I'm gone. That was heartbreaking to think about, but comforting to know he saw my maturity and ability to handle everyday responsibilities. I hadn't felt I was ready to be on my own, but he helped me realize I would be just fine. Eight years later, and I'm doing okay on my own, but man do I wish he was here. Happy Father Day, Dad. Great story. I have a similar story, a little more unconventional. About 13 years ago, my dad also had cancer. I was 13 and he knew when his last day was and the last thing and most impactful thing he ever said to me was, I love you and I will come back to haunt you. It sounds weird to say, but that has been the most comforting thing he could have said. It feels so great to know I have so many angels and ghosts keeping track of me. Just so you know, you too have someone great watching over you too. When I was 12, nearly 13, my mom took me out on a dinner date to talk to me about puberty and how much we might hate each other over the next few years. As part of the evening, she said she had a gift for me. I was pretty super excited. She had teased that it was a very special and something I would cherish. So clearly, I thought it would be a Sega Genesis or maybe a pair of Reebok pumps. 33 years old, still never had a pair and quite pissed about it. Instead, she handed me the book, Love You Forever. You know, the children's book. On the inside, she had written, to my darling Jake, love mom, always remember this. She died yesterday after a 12 year battle with early onset dementia. I'll be getting always remember this tattooed on my arm next week, traced from her handwriting. I've been reading a bunch of the comments in this post for the last hour or so, and yours was the first one to actually hit a heartstring and bring tears to my eyes. So here I am, a near 26 year old man on the subway with tears in my eyes. She sounds like my mom, and I can't imagine what my life will be like when her time comes. I'm truly sorry to hear about your loss, man. I went to college about five hours away from where I grew up, and the first two years there, I didn't have a car. My dad, who commuted probably two plus hours a day, I grew up in Northern Virginia, every workday for a lot of his working life, drove down five hours to come pick me up so that I could come home for some holiday usually. This is when we would have our talks. At the time, I was a college sophomore struggling with what direction I wanted to go in terms of major and career. I've always been pretty intellectually capable, but never had a career that just beckoned me or made me feel passionate. But I went to college anyway, since that's what you're supposed to do if you have the money and the capability. As an upper middle class millennial, I now realize this is not an unusual feeling at all. I ended up majoring in history and anthropology. My dad is a baby boomer who grew up dirt poor and worked at a 7-Eleven to get himself through college and law school. I just remember coming at him with a question about what I should pursue, and he put it to me like this. Well, there's two ways. First, you either you find something you love to do, or second, find something you love and work to support it. I took this in for a moment and asked which one he did. I do the second one. I asked what he was supporting, with a naivete only a 19-year-old can muster. He chuckled. You? That just flipped my perspective on everything and made me feel a lot better about being sort of lost. I knew I'd figure it out and that life would push me where I needed to go when I needed to go there. He's still around. I should tell him. Today would be the perfect day to tell him. 
I might not have given birth to you, but you are mine. You were mine from the day I met you. I loved you the second I saw you. Nobody can change that. This came from my stepmother a couple years ago. I met her when I was 13, and I'm almost 21 now. It meant a lot because she was the first strong, consistent mother figure I ever had. She knows that was a nice thing to say, but I don't think she knows quite how much it meant to me. I don't think she will ever know how much I love and respect her for who she is. Similar story from another point of view. My uncle has two children. Legally, his son is his, although he's not his bio dad. When he later remarried, his wife already had a daughter, and he decided he'd raise her as his own, especially since her father was out of the picture. For years, even though he was really happy with his family, he wanted to actually father a child of his own, but it never happened. He tried for years to find a way to adopt my cousin, but she has a father and it just never happened. My cousin, when she was in her teens, decided to change last names and take my uncle's, because he's the only father she's ever known, even though his name is not on her birth certificate. My uncle says this was worth a thousand I love yous, because she also chose him to be her father. He compares it to a sort of marriage because they both said yes to each other. That day was the last day he regretted not having a child of his own. This is really insignificant, but made a big impact on my relationship with my mother. I was about four, I have a surprising amount of memories from when I was little, and I was coloring on one of those art easels for kids and my mom was cleaning the house. I asked her if I could draw on myself and she surprisingly said yes, so of course I took my markers and just went to town, coloring my arms and stomach and legs. She came into the room to find me and flipped out that I had done this. I thought I was in big trouble, so I started crying and I said, but you told me I could. To which she responded, you're right, I did. I thought you meant on the paper though. That was my fault. Let's get you cleaned up. And I wasn't in trouble at all. That was the day I realized adults aren't just there to punish you and that my mom was fair and understanding. To this day, that's one of my favorite qualities of my mom and makes for a solid relationship. Parents actually owning up to their mistakes and saying sorry is really important for a child. When I was little and my mother was still alive, her and my father seemed to always be getting into fights. Even after she was diagnosed with cancer, gone through multiple surgeries, and fought back her estimated date of death five years, was essentially brain dead, and died, my father still harassed her. Besides calling her stupid and saying he hoped she would just die already, one memory of him really stuck with me. One time during the summer, we had a storm and the power went out. My mother had just begun to enter her final stage of life and was on an oxygen machine and bedridden. She was unable to move, hear, see, or smell, but if she was conscious, she could still feel us. My father turned on the generator but sent power to our basement, where he always smoked. Confused, we asked him why our mother's oxygen machine wasn't powered. We have oxygen tanks, so I may as well enjoy myself. We had one oxygen tank with hardly enough air for two hours. It was for emergencies such as moving her to a hospital, not wait for the power to come on, which living in the country would take days sometimes. But the line that makes me look in the mirror every day and do reality checks is before my mother was even diagnosed. I was five and at this point, I wasn't aware of all the fighting. I remember my mother walked into my room one day and sat down on the bed with me. She asked me what I was doing and I was playing Pokemon Fire Red, the first video game she got me. She held my hand, said that she loved me. Osmizer 20, please don't ever be like your father. Please respect women and love your children. Know that I may not always be around, but I will always love you and support you. Even if I think you're wrong, I'll help you. But please be different than your father. As she lost her speech, the last words she spoke was to me. I walked out of the kitchen through her room to say goodnight. It was 12 a.m. She grabbed my hand and lipped, sit down. I held her hand for what felt like an eternity when she finally managed to say the first thing in three days and the last thing in her life. I feel so bad for you. I'm so sorry I'm leaving. I love you, mom. Your mother was an amazing person. I hope you took her advice. She truly was. As for her advice, I try to treat others as best I can, but trying to not be my father is becoming more difficult every day. Maybe it's just that I constantly remind myself to not be him. But no matter what, I am going to treat my kids far better than he did. I have a whole spiel of stuff he's done that has affected my siblings and I, but it has nothing to do with this thread. I'm a high-strung person, but when I was a child, my dad looked me dead in the eyes and said, 
be like the swan. They glide through the water and look calm and cool. But if you were to look below, you'd see their feet frantically kicking. Don't let them see you sweat, but work hard. I didn't think it made an impact, but people tell me often that I come off very organized and calm, while inside my inner monologue is a constant scream. Thanks, Dad. Be good to each other was the last thing my father said to my mother and I before he went into the surgery room from which he would eventually die. I think he meant for my mother and I to be good to each other, but I try to remember this every day and apply to every interaction I have with people. My father was the salt of the earth, a selfless man who was the perfect example of how to treat others, and I can only hope to lead my life based on his actions and words. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing. It's so important to be kind with everyone around us, even those we don't know. You can be friendly to everyone, but you can't be friends with everyone. Yes! My mom always said to me, be friendly to everyone, but choose your friends wisely. Excellent advice. I say this to my students all the time. I have a good one. One of my first memories was the time I lied to my mom about something. She patiently explained why it was not good to lie and something people should never do. Later that evening, the phone rang and my big sister ran to answer. My mom was watching TV or something and called from the other room. If that is, name I forgot. Tell her I am at the store. The moment you discover your parents' hypocrisy can be devastating. <laughs>